All right, welcome everybody. This is Dave with Alum House, and today I want to take an opportunity to kind of give you some information and walk you through how I teach sound technicians to practice at home. Uh, this is going to be a getting started video. This is the first in a couple of videos, and uh, and let's just go ahead and dive in right here. Hopefully, you've downloaded uh, Studio One Prime, and that is installed, and we can see here that it's up and running. Also. Hopefully you've gone and downloaded the tracks either from the Google Drive that I've recommended or you have tracks from your venue that you can utilize. Those tracks are just pre-recorded right off of the soundboard, a digital soundboard, and you can use them to practice at home. Uh, one thing I'll mention is that when you're mixing live, uh, obviously some of the things we're going to do here are just to get us to be able to practice, but when you're mixing live, there are certain things you you can't really plan for. We'll talk about that in a minute, but let's go ahead and get started here. So in the top left, we're going to hit create new song. And in this case, we're actually going to call this uh, test service, let's say. And as we come down here, the only thing that we need to change is this stretch audio files to song tempo. Uh, mine is unchecked, which is correct. If yours does have a check in there, make sure that you uncheck it. And we'll hit OK. And this is going to go ahead and open up a new canvas for us. Now at this point, we have the ability to insert these, uh, these tracks that we've got. And so I'm actually just going to select all of these tracks. And we're going to click and drag them over here to the beginning of the canvas. And you'll see it's going to start to populate those tracks in here in a preview format. The next thing I want to do is create a little bit of real estate and clean this up just a touch before we even start to work on it. So in the bottom right, I'm actually going to close this browse window. Just gives us a little bit more space to work with. In the top black area up here, I'm going to right click and I'm going to select fit timeline to contents. And you'll see that's going to truncate these waveforms because we have, uh, I think it's four songs worth of information here. And so you can actually pretty easily see where each song starts and stops. The next thing I want to do is on the left hand side, we see at the top we have acoustic, uh, AG is for acoustic guitar. We have a bass track here next, electric guitar. What I want to do is order these in the way that our soundboard is ordered. So I'm actually just going to select it once over here. Don't select the waveform, but select the actual track here and just click and drag. And so we're going to do kick, uh, snare. I can hold down the shift key. I'm on a Windows machine. Uh, Tom 1, Tom 2, I can drag all these up. Then I have some overhead left and overhead right that I'll drag up. Then we normally run bass, electric guitar, acoustic guitar. And then we have our lead vocal and female vocal. The other thing I want to do, which just makes it a little bit easier for me to visualize going forward, is <clears throat> if I s click here and then shift and click the top, see how we've selected all of these tracks. Now I can go up here in this top left color window and I can change all of these to one color. Uh, I'm going to pick something that's less aggressive. Let's do that green color. That's nice. All right. Now what we want to do, if we look at these waveforms, we're going to see differences. If we look at the kick drum, we might call this size a medium. And then this next track down, the snare, notice how it's really big. We'll call that large. And it's um, it's taking up the whole little visualization here. Uh, we can see now Tom 1 and Tom 2 are pretty small. Come down here to bass. See how you can barely see the bass? What I want to do is listen to what this sounds like right now. Uh, we're going to take our next steps into doing some gain staging, but right now I'm just going to click up here in the top and we're just going to hit the play button and see what we get. So you could hear there that we had a lot of drums. Obviously those waveforms are really big. We had very minimal guitars. Those waveforms are pretty small. We had a lot of female vocal uh, and less male vocal. Um, so what we want to do is set our gain staging. And this is 
step one for mixing live, step one for mixing at home uh, in the what we call in the box or in the DAW here. Um, when you're mixing in the box or when you're mixing live, gain structure is crucial. So what we're going to do is down in the bottom right, we're going to hit mix. And this is going to bring up a little soundboard looking thing. And to get started, we're going to close a few things again, just to clean up what we're looking at. So over here on the left, I'm going to click instrument because I don't need that. This little multi tab thing at the bottom, we don't need that. That's a little bit easier to see. I'm also going to click these arrows down right here from small to large. That just shrinks things a little bit more. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use these numbers down here, which I know are kind of small, but we're going to try and get all of our gain structure set to negative six. This is for mixing in the box. And just a brief aside here, um, when you start getting a bunch of tracks, 16 tracks, 24, 26 tracks, even up to 32 tracks, um, your output way over here on the right, this main out, can only take so many things going through it. And what I found is a good general rule with the amount of tracks we're working with is to start with everything around minus six, and that's gonna give us a good general structure. At my church, on our soundboard, in our environment, we set our gain roughly to minus nine on the soundboard, but again, we're mixing in the box here, so minus six is where I'm going for. So let's get started with that. We're gonna come up on the top left up here, and we're gonna hit this little I, which opens up our inspector. And we need to come down and actually move some things around. So if we come down here, just above, uh, sorry, just below this fader, you see how we can click and drag this? And we're gonna open it up and we're gonna see right here a thing that says gain. And that's what we're going to use to adjust our gain. So let's just go from the first track and go all the way through here. Um, this will take a couple minutes, but it's the most valuable few minutes you can spend. So I'm going to turn the volume down so that we can just watch because this really has nothing to do with what we're hearing. There we go, volume down. This is just by what we see. So I'm up here. Uh, you can see this window that I'm in. I'm actually going to just maybe loop this for a second. So I can just click and drag up there. I can right click and hit loop active and it'll just kind of scroll back and forth in there. So here we go. We're going to hit play and we're going to watch our kick drum this first track up here. And you can see that it's actually hitting minus six. Okay. So I'm going to leave the kick drum exactly where it is. Let's move on to snare. I'm going to click the waveform. Okay. And now I'm looking and you can see that this peak meter is way up here at zero. So I'm going to take that down by three decibels. So I'm going to hit minus three in the gain. And now we're just going to evaluate and see where it's hitting. And so that's a little bit above minus six. So I'm going to go and drop my gain down to minus five decibels. And I'm going to call that OK. This is not a, a perfect science here. Um, so we just kind of keep rolling. Now, the part that we're looping right now on the toms, if we look at tom one, this is just picking up extra information. It's not really picking up toms. If we look at this section right here, this looks more like a tom part. So I'm actually just temporarily going to click over here. I'll watch the toms. Toms are at minus 12. Tom one is. So I'm going to boost that by three decibels and see what I get. I tend to move in, in three decibel increments. All right, so that's at minus 12 still. I'm going to go up to plus six. And that should be sufficient there. Now, uh, Tom two, let's take a look. I'm going to back it up in the same spot. Typically, we're playing Tom one and two at the same time. Uh, so this is still a little bit low. I'm going to bump that up three decibels, Tom two. And that's getting pretty close. It's good enough for what I need. Overhead left. We're going to go back into this loop area. There we go. Select overhead left. Click on the waveform. Uh, you can see how big this gets. See this big section way over here to the right? That is massive. Uh, we can also see that it's hitting almost zero up there. So I'm going to take that down by minus three to start out with. And see what we get. That looks like it's working out pretty well. And interestingly, overhead right is pretty small. So we're going to bring that up by three decibels. Let's see what we get. 
I could probably go a little bit more. So I'm going to go up to plus six. See what I get there. Yeah, that's getting pretty close to minus six. So that's good. Now comes the base. The base is so minuscule. Um, we'll come back and talk about why this is uh, the case in just a minute. But base is way down here. I'm going to start out in this case going plus 10. I can actually see it now. That's encouraging. We've jumped up pretty good. Let's go up plus 15. That's better. Let's try plus 20. You only get 24 decibels of adjustability here. We're still below minus six. Let's try all 24 and see what it does for me. All right, so that's above minus six here in the, in the meter. So we'll take that down to a plus 22. And let's go to electric guitar. Electric guitar also is pretty small. So I'm going to go ahead and just guess at a plus six there and see what I get. Electric guitar, still pretty low. We're going to go plus nine. Um, I'm actually going to scoot over. See how the wavelength is pretty small here in the section that we're looping. It's a little bit bigger over here. I'm going to just click like I did on the toms and see what I get now for electric guitar. That's close. I'm going to take this up to a plus 12. And I'm just going to go ahead and leave that alone. Let's look at acoustic guitar while we're here. Acoustic guitar uh, looks like it could use three decibels. Notice this little peak right here uh, where the where my cursor is. That little peak right there. Uh, we're going to end up using a compressor to control that, but this is just our initial gain structure setting. All right, let me scroll down here. All right, I'm going to stop this stuff from moving. And let's look at this vocal lead channel. You can see here that these, uh, the section on the left is pretty controlled. Look how big the section in the middle gets. My assumption is that they went from singing background vocals in the first song to singing lead vocals in the second song. Now, when we do our sound checks, we get them to either play or sing ideally at their loudest volume that they're going to be because we don't want to have this happen in the service. This will clip our, uh, our preamp and clip our everything on our digital console. Uh, so we're actually gonna slice this. We have the luxury here in the box of slicing kind of here in the blank space and afterwards and dealing with the middle section different than the left and the right. So if we come up here, we can use this little slice tool, this little knife up here. We can click on that and come down and just kind of pick a spot where there's no audio files, audio waves happening before and after. Now we have three different sections we can treat individually. I'm going to come back up to the top, hit the arrow. And now let's listen to the first section here. I'm going to hit the play button and let's watch vocal lead. So this could actually come up maybe a decibel. We'll hit plus one. Um, the end on the far right over here looks pretty similar as well. So I'm going to click that waveform and I'm going to take that up one decibel as well. Now in the middle, I'm going to click this and I'm actually going to come over here, find the biggest section and play into that biggest section. Look how high that is going. That is hitting zero. So I'm going to take this down by minus six and I'm going to go back and play that again. And let's see where we are now. We're at minus six dB. So that is much more manageable and we can control that section. Uh, the vocal female channel here, vocal female, if we go back up here in the beginning where we were looping, because that looks pretty even, I'm going to select that channel. Uh, we can bring that up a couple dB, I'll say 3 dB. And if you remember, there we go, minus six, um, we were hearing a lot of female vocal and less of the male vocal in the beginning. So I'm going to stop this right now. All we've done is set our gain structure so that uh, we have a pretty even format of each instrument. I'm going to come up here and undo the loop. We're just going to click here in this section. I'm going to close my inspector window by cl clicking this eye in the top left. And let's bring the volume back up and take a listen just like we did at the beginning but now we have set our gain structure. Here we go. Mm, 
Okay, so we can actually hear some instruments. We hear the bass guitar right now. It's a pretty gritty and dirty bass guitar, but that's the sound they had. Um, so in the next video, what we're going to do is start to add a fat channel or a channel strip, which gives us compression equalizer. And we're going to start to build a mix and actually change these faders around and see if we can craft the sound to something that's pleasing. So thanks for watching this video. Check back in for the next one and we will catch you soon.